inventory grew this week, but the gap between this year and last year actually widened. But the market, it's slowing down, I think. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to take a look at interest rates and do a quick update there. And let's talk about the ghost town on the Cape and how it could really affect property values and for the luxury home of the week we're actually headed into boston to look at a single family home in beacon hill this place is awesome hi i'm jeff chubb i'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent i've sold more than a thousand houses if you have any questions in regards to real estate then nope i'm here to help a little conjecture here but it feels like there was a little slowing down in the market there are still multiple offer scenarios but it seems like the number of crazy situations are definitely decreasing this week, I had a client write an offer for an asking price with an escalation clause. Now, the listing agent said there were three offers on the property, which I don't know if I 100% believe at this point, but my client's asking price offer was actually taken. The escalation clause, taking the sales price over asking price, wasn't even enacted. Using the escalation clause ended up saving them tens of thousands of dollars. And setting up a tour with another client for showing us yesterday, there were a lot more houses still available than I really anticipated. I was pleasantly surprised, actually. And the ones that did go under agreement had five offers, one offer, three offers. No feedback from agents just blew it out of the water. There was nothing crazy, if you will. I think there are going to be some good buying opportunities in the next month or so as we head into the dog days of the summer market. But now, let's jump into the single-family market stats. We currently have 3,967 single-family homes on the market. Now, inventory continued to trickle up this week. It's up 108 units from last week, which sounds great and all, but to put it all in perspective, it's up only 4.2% in the last 28 days. I'm getting more and more worried about that fall market. To put this in perspective, it's like the snowpack in the Rocky Mountains. If the snowpack is small, then the states in the west get really worried about water reserves come the summer and the fall. Well, a low inventory built now means that there will be a lot less of a reserve come the fall when we historically see a drawdown on our inventory. In other words, in the fall, we generally see more buyers than sellers. If this imbalance happens like it historically does in the fall, again, then it's going to be a tough market for buyers. And I think this chart really accents that problem. The blue line is where we are today. The red line is where we were last year. We currently have 990 fewer single family homes on the market today than we did last year. And you can really see the drawdown in the inventory that I was talking about with the, this graph. Now look at how sharp that red and yellow line are towards the end of the year. If you're planning on buying in the fall, you may want to think sooner instead of later, as you will have more inventory to choose from and most likely be able to find a better value. We had 1,115 houses come on the market last week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 1,143 units, so we're pretty much at average. But this week, last year, we saw 1,596 houses come on the market. That means the amount of new inventory that came on the market was off by 30.1%. We had 1,054 houses go under agreement this week. We were pretty much right on average considering the four-week rolling average is 1,160 units. We had 1,241 units go under agreement this week last year. So this means that under agreements were off by only 15.1%. That's a big imbalance. New listings were down by nearly 30% while pendings were down by only 15%. Even with all the talk about high interest rates and all that diminished demand, buyer demand continues to outstrip seller supply, and by quite a bit. There were 701 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $829,000 and a median sales price of $660,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually fell to 1.76 months compared to last week's 1.77 months, saying that it's a still a strong seller's market. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now, onto the condo market. We have 2,328 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this inventory build is almost like a joke. Two weeks ago, we had 2,322 units on the market. Last week, we had 2,314, and now 2,328. So in the last two weeks, inventory has gone up by six units. In the last 28 days, inventory has gone up by 0.04%. Ouch. Year over year, the condo market inventory levels have just continued to get worse. Worse for buyers, that is. It's pretty amazing if you're a seller. 
We now have 363 fewer condos on the market today than we did today last year. I have the same snowpack fear that I have in the single family market as is I do in the condo market. We need more inventory. There are 467 condos that came on the market this week. The four week rolling average is 512 units. So we were a little below that number. Again, that was the same story as last week. We were also 175 units or 27.3% off of last year's numbers when 642 units were listed. There are 447 condos that went under agreement this week. Now, the four-week rolling average for under agreements is 457 units, so we were right on average there. But here is what is kind of crazy. There are 461 condos that sold this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by only 3% year over year. So last week, we were only 10.5% below last year's numbers, and then this week, we're only 3%. No wonder inventory is barely growing. So inventory was down by 27% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 3%. Another big imbalance where buyer demand is far outstripping seller supply. There were 335 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $664,000 and that median sales price of $555,000. And then that month of inventory actually decreased to 2.05 months from last week's 2.11 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Another sideways and slightly up week for interest rates. They aren't moving really in either direction. I guess the positive way to think about all this is that it's providing market stability, and stability is always a good thing. For the last two weeks, the market has been waiting for rates to either break out and go either higher or plunge lower. And it's not like nothing has happened in the economic news arena. There were some big events to push rates either higher or lower, but nothing triggered either event. We had the consumer price index data come along and nothing happened. We had the Fed pause with their rates, and nothing happened. Three to six months ago, the big money in the markets were expecting a Fed pivot, where they would start decreasing interest rates by the end of the summer. I just don't see it. I'm thinking these rate levels are going to continue into the fall market. If you're waiting for interest rates to come down, I think it's safe to say that you are going to be waiting for a good time longer. I think this is a good example as to why so many people get it so wrong in trying to time the market. Predicting? Well, it's just guessing. Let's talk about the Cape and the ghost town and how it could affect home values. Check this headline out. On Cape Cod, it's the question of the summer. Why are so many vacation rentals empty? The Cape has enjoyed many years of rental scarcity, which has helped play into property values going up by leaps and bounds. And that's not the story this summer. It's more a tale of vacancy this summer. One owner was quoted as saying, I don't understand how there are almost no rentals. And the Cape Cod and Islands Association of Realtors are reporting an occupancy rate 20% lower than last season. Here's what happened. The economy, well, it's softened. When that happens, the first place people look to cut is discretionary spending, specifically travel. This has happened. While at the same time, pricing has gone up and up and up, almost to a nosebleed scenario down on the Cape. This past April, there were more than 16,000 short-term Cape Cod rentals compared to 12,100 in March of 2021. This means that some owners won't be able to make enough revenue to cover their expenses going into the winter months. They may be forced to sell as they won't be able to hold on to that property. And they would be selling into a higher interest rate environment, meaning that new buyers, well, they need higher rents to justify the higher purchase prices, all while the higher rental prices are about to give way and see a major pullback. So that means something it has to give. And in my opinion, that's going to be prices. Prices of Cape properties will need to come down to a level where an investor or a second home buyer can account for rentals to carry the property or at least come very close to carrying that property. I have my video on the top 10 depreciating towns coming out on Saturday. There is one Cape Cod town on that list. Hearing this news, I expect there to be many more on that list by the end of the year. So be on the lookout for that video. It's definitely worth a watch. And now onto the luxury home of the week, which is a five bedroom, five full and three half bath home nestled on Beacon Hill overlooking the common. This place is incredible and it should be for that price. 
This is a stately single family home that blends historic elegance with modern luxury. Is there a way to go beyond top of the line? Because if so, then that's probably the best way to describe the chef's kitchen, which opens up to the family room and overlooks the backyard garden, which may be better referred to as an oasis. The double parlor boasts 12 foot ceilings. The stunning mahogany paneled office opens up to an outdoor deck. The master suite level offers a luxury bathroom with soaking tub and separate shower. There are an additional five generously sized bedrooms plus an au pair suite on the lower level. Other features include a four car garage, an elevator, eight fireplaces, and four outdoor living areas, which include a roof terrace with just some amazing city views. This opportunity is being marketed with an asking price of $31 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week, well, just for fun. But my specialty and my love is helping the normal guy, not the gal buying a $31 million Boston brownstone. And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide that same service that that $31 million mansion folks get. But for us non $163,000 per year property taxpayer folks, every person's home is their castle and they deserve to be treated that way. My information, it's in the description below. So check it out there. But you can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your name and your contact information. And then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever is easiest and works best for you. I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. Questions or comments about the market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video. So I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.